when you walk into rooms with other CEOs of other sovereign wealth funds, aren't you probably the youngest person there? And I'm not even talking about whether or not there's other women in that room, mm. but I'm just saying, just in age, are there, do you, do you actually go and find younger people than you? Mm. Well, when you walk into the room in Rwanda, <laughs> no, sovereign <laughs> wealth unique. funds. Yes. <laughs> When you walk into the room with other sovereign wealth funds, not necessarily. I think mm. this is a finance in general, and then even this sovereign wealth fund specifically is still very much male dominated. Mm. Um, and yeah, you'll find that you know people have gray hairs. Um, mm. You know, so no, I, <laughs> I mean you 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 do st you will stand out. Mm. Um, yeah, it's a uh, is there are there a lot of women? In that space? Not as CEOs. Mm. I think in the C-suite, you start to, s to see it. Mm. Um, not so much. But this, like in general, in, in the finance industry, I think they still, they still have a big representation issue when it comes to, to mm. females, especially in the senior levels. What's that experience like, though? Do, you, do they listen to you? Or are they looking at you and saying that this young lady over here, there's not much to to hear from her? Mm. I would say it's about how you, I think people will, will always underestimate, um, they'll underestimate or make assumptions based off, you know, if you're different from what mm. they expect, right? Um, and, and so this is, this is not, this is something that happens a lot, but, um, I, I do think that it's it's more about not being afraid to speak up. Mm. Um, it's you know sitting in the front. I you know when we go for some of these, I've I've, I've been for the not been in the role for for long, so it's only been seven months. But I had the opportunity to attend our sovereign wealth fund forum, which mm. is global. Mm. Um, and I and you know not being afraid to sit in the front. I went and sat in front because that's where the, the more CEO established. Said. Um, well, it's it's for all CEOs, but mm. that's where the you know the assumption is the more established um, funds will sit. But that's mm. also an opportunity then to get to meet them one on one and introduce yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, got to present on 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 Rwanda, and we, you know we were pitching to host the the conference. So I think it's 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 so much. I don't focus on sticking out as a sore so thumb in the mm. room. I think it's more the focus on okay, now that you're in the room. How do you actually take advantage of being in the room, regardless of what people might think when they see you? Yeah. yeah. How surprised were you when the white paper came out and your name was there as the next CEO of the Agachiro Development Fund? And then you get back in, you get into the office. Can you take us through, you know, your first couple of weeks as CEO? What kind of how did you have to move in this very new, you know, new institution, mm. new space? What was that experience like? Because I'm thinking you had previously come from the Kigali Innovation City, mm -hmm. right? So that's, it's not, I think it's, it, it must have been quite different, mm. those experiences. Um, so I'm, because, um, I'm not new, I, I was, uh, at least I wasn't new to, to government, so. Oh. <laughs> um, and so, and, and, and usually there's, I think there, there's an, you know, there's a handover process and onboarding with your yeah. predecessor, with your board. Um, and so there's a lot of, uh, with your ministry, your line ministry, which is a ministry of finance. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps is the, <laughs> the, the transition. Mm. And, and I think you have, um, there's a there's a lot to dive into immediately, mm. um, which which you get into. So it, I think it was more the volume of what you ha the focus was on. How do I understand the portfolio? Mm. What are mm. the issues? Mm. So like time stops <laughs> yeah. for you to like to to, to adjust to adjust, mm. and so you have to you know hit the ground running from day one. Mm. Um, but it was it was it was a. And I, I don't think, um, you know, you're still hitting the ground running and learning. Mm. Um, but in general, I think there was, there, at least there was 
infrastructure to support in mm. terms of people, mm. in terms of the board, in terms of the, the ministry and, and mm. people you could rely on, and then the, the team that you find. Um, and then I think the rest is actually just doing the work to make sure that you're mm. up to speed and asking for help and um, asking questions for the, you know, what you don't know, because you can't assume that you know, you know everything from day one and mm. just being open that you always just be learning. And I think I'm even today, I would say I'm still learning, but I've, at least you, you eventually get a good grasp of, mm. of, of the portfolio, you understand the mandate, you, um, and then everything else is, yeah, it's, you go with the, f with the flow and just keep, and yeah. And the announcement, mm. did you see it coming? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you, <laughs> you ever see it coming. <laughs> mm.